going to be a co-op. And a co-op is mm -hmm. a business entity that um, encompasses worker owners. So workers, um, they um, provide all the, the labor, right? right? But, but not only um, will the, the workers be that, but they'll also be provided um, um, and, um, advisement in terms of uh, business development, right. really building the business and, and building equity um, in terms of wealth. So the profits are split. Um, you see that a equity. lot in North. I, I remember that there was a co-op in New Hampshire, Vermont, and actually I think there was a Hanover co-op out east in the uh, Boston area, Hanover, obviously. Um, and where you're, you're right, the employees had a say, if you would, they're like board members. Yes, yes. So we, we, we figured that we would position this company mm -hmm. as a social enterprise. What's the name of, what's the, name of the company? Do you already have it's, it's Green Vitalize Urban Growers. Do you guys have a website? Yes, we do. Greenvitalize.org. So um, please come and visit us and you'll find dot out more information. Org. Dot yes. org. Why dot org. Greenvitalize.org. Dot so org. tell us a little bit about the, uh, do you have a facility yet? Um, we do. We have a facility in, in at um, located at 4 King Street on okay. um, Worcester, Massachusetts, in, in back of Stone Soup Community Center. Yeah. And that facility is a, a greenhouse with a, a community farm attached to it. So we use that um, that center as an educational facility. Do you also um, have the aquaponics there, or are you looking for more of an industrial building so, for that? So we have the aquaponic systems there. We have different types of aquaponic systems set up there so mm -hmm. we can experiment. So when we scale up to a larger warehouse facility, right. we'll be um, well, we'll have the capacity to do and what when, we need and when to did you do. actually uh, open? If you will. So we opened last year. We had our ribbon launch last year. We had various partners involved, uh, WPI, uh, Clark University, mm -hmm. um, Youth Build helped us raise the greenhouse. Youth Build is a, right. is a yeah. youth yep. program Absolutely. in the city. Um, um, we had support from UMass Memorial Health Care since the initiative was, was aligned with the CHIP sure. the Community Health mm -hmm. Improvement Plan. Uh, one of the priority areas is improving healthy and in the community. So we focused on uh, an initiative where we could grow food year round using less resources to grow food. So right now we're experimenting with this technology aquaponics. Its, its benefit is that it prov um, 80 percent less water is used in, fa in farming food as well as um, um, you can grow food year round. You can use stackable farming methods where you don't have a, need a lot of land to grow. So um, we're currently specking out space right now, warehouse space, repurposing warehouse space in the city, right? That's so unlike, kind of the idea. So unlike a lot of the local farms in the Central Mass region uh, outside of Worcester, be it the, the local farms in Natick, Framingham, the, the Bolton Orchards of the Worlds up north, uh, so you're looking at it a, a more of a factory based growing growing yes in, inside yes in warehouse space absolutely we use in vertical um, stacking systems to mm -hmm. grow food and LED lighting and automation technology interesting um, so um, we'll be growing um, specializing in various high production high yield crops um, of course we have to look at uh, price margins sure, and of things course. like that. So we're looking at um, crops that have a high value um, in terms of profit margin and, ter and, and also in terms of demand. Right. Um, there's, there's certain crops that are in huge demand right now in the city, so we're, we're and looking you're, and at you're, capitalizing you're, on that. And your, your plan, though, is to go with the aquaponics? So, uh, so uh, what, that, that you, 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 you push water with nutrients through like some yeah, sort of... Yeah, so let me explain a little bit about aquaponics. Aquaponics is a blend of um, hydroponics and aquaculture. So aquaculture is the farming of fish, and then hydroponics is growing plants in water. Mm -hmm. So we're using the fish. They produce a byproduct from their waste. It produces a, a natural organic fertilizer hmm. that... Um, um, increases the yields of plants in terms so of... So the fish will be on site? or you, uh, The fish yeah. are on site, yes. Yeah. So we have, uh, we, we currently have uh, tilapia tanks. We you raise in tilapia, and we're also looking at shellfish. Um, so, you, so you're also selling those as they get to... 
to adulthood? Or? That is a, that is a market that we're investigating um, right now. There's a lot of uh, regulations around that, and so and and so we're looking to scale up in increments. Mm -hmm. We're looking at the the vegetables first, and then as we grow and scale up, then we'll be looking at fish fish production. One specialty. Pretty interesting uh, model, huh? Yeah, one specialty yeah. item I was looking at is uh, the smoked. Um, fish market, so smoked salmon, smoked tilapia. Okay. Um, that would probably be a specialty item that we could produce and put into a Whole Foods or um, some type of chain like that. So who's your biggest customer today? Our biggest customer, uh, we, so right now we're focused on education, right? right. We, we built a greenhouse, right, yeah. that we could put in the middle of the city where we could bring this community around mm -hmm. it where they could see the the process of growing food sure. in the city, where it comes from, in terms of the youth getting their hands on, um, in terms of uh, planting, um, in terms of businesses in the city, um, learning about um, um, local sustainable farming and the benefits of it. Okay. And then once we got that community input and buy-in and we educated them about that, then we could really scale up because the community would be around the the bigger idea mm -hmm. in terms of um, supporting us and finding a warehouse space. And um, also, um, um, when we start to recruit for worker owners, they would already um, have the um, they would already be exposed to the type of business mm. that we're trying Come to do. Come through the educational. Yes, yeah. and so we, we're, we're actually looking at job training, a job training model providing um, a certificate, urban agriculture certificate program right. that we could train our worker owners, right, to operate our systems as we scale up. So right now, um, if, if I understand what you're saying correctly, is that you're, right now it's, it's more of a showpiece then it is an actual uh, it, it, distribution center. It's a, it's an it's a showpiece educational center, Correct. which yes. we could we could actually. Uh, so we're aligned right now with the Worcester Public Schools. We're okay. we're actually lining up tours right now to 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 have students come in. There's five workshops that um, surround urban agriculture. So and what are the targeted age groups for these? Is um, this, are we talking grammar school, middle school, pre, high school, pre-K through twelve? Okay. Oh, pre K everybody. through twelve, and then we're also looking at adults. So, um, so there'll be cooking classes going on with the food that we grow. There'll be um, classes that focus on sustainable farming and aquaponics mm -hmm. one hundred and one. What is the science behind it? Right. Plant growth and development. There'll be a class and series around that. So, um, when youth come in and and there's a teacher that is teaching a, a, a science class uh, on um, biology they can kind of integrate what we're sure. doing in the greenhouse to their class. So this is hands-on laboratory that we've aligned with the Worcester Public School. My suggestion would be you give them a popcorn uh, seed. I'll <laughs> oh, go back to that. Popcorn seed, huh? <laughs> I'm, not that, I'm not letting that go. Yes, hey, so, uh, yes. well, it's exciting stuff we're talking with, with Howard Lucas, who's one of the, uh, one of the leaders of the Green, Vital, green Vitalization Urban. So, so let's look at it as a bigger scope. Social venture collaborative. Okay. Right? It's, uh, and the name of it though is Green, green Vitalize, Vitalize Urban Growers, Urban Growers yes. and GreenVitalize.org. Green for more Vitalize. information. All right. So y you know we we had mentioned as we alluded to before. Whenever we have guests on the show, we we try to do a little game, take you out of your comfort zone a bit. We're gonna we're gonna play a little game with you. I'm gonna give you three potential. I'm going to describe three jobs from the past. These are jobs that are no longer with us, okay? So you're on the cutting edge of jobs for the future with aquaponics and, and aqua... Robotics and automation. Oh, animatronics, all that, yes. right? So, so you're on the cutting edge. We're going to go back. We're taking you back to the past. Mm. I'm going to give you... I'm going to describe three jobs. They all have kind of funny names. That's kind of the, the, the part of our research, crack research team. You're going to pick the real one. If you win, you're going to get a prize from us. Not really, but okay, let's we'll, go with we'll, that. We'll, we'll put, yeah, we'll get you, we'll get your certific uh, Howard, certificate. Gotta, We're going to do certificates. You've got to understand it takes Jeff a lot longer to introduce the game than the game is actually long itself. I just so. want to make sure you're clear on the rules because we've, we've had some disagreements. You, you know, like people didn't understand the rules, and then they're, they're, they're charging us with some sort of bias. Or so question number one would be. Okay, so I'm going to give you three. Here we go. <laughs> number one. The Ding Dong Man. Okay. 
Before the doorbell was, uh, was a common feature at tenement buildings, this man would be stationed within the building's foyer and would manually ring specific charms, chimes that are connected to the apartments within to notify them when guests arrive. Quite innovative for the yeah. time. Yes. Two, the knocker-up man. Before alarm clocks, this person would be hired to ensure their clients were awake usually by rapping on their door or window frame using a stick. I'm sorry, can, can you repeat that job title again? The knocker-up man. That's, he would that's knock what I thought you said. Yes. Okay. Knocker-up man. Number three, Mr. Flippity Cakes. Mr. Flippity Cakes. This fanciful name uh, was given to the person whose role it was to turn over cheese shards as they aged in the... Chartou years located in many of the East Coast, East Coast larger cities at the turn of the century. So, Mr. Ding Dong Man, Mr. Knocker Up Man, or Mr. Flippity Cakes, which one do you think is the real turn of the century job? I would say Mr. Flippity Cakes. I I, I kind of like that. I like the title for one. Yeah, the title is beautiful. I think it's. it's I've got business cards that say that. Yeah, it's flippity cakes. It's it definitely marketable. And then <laughs> it's um, very, very marketable. Yes, and yes, then the um fake. Yeah, they did the the job is quite vague. It's undefined. So you can kinda do what you want with it. No one would know what you You've gotta want. turn over the cheese shards. You've got a set roll. All right, well how long does that take? <laughs> <laughs> You've got a lot though. You got a lot of cheese. Which one? Yeah. Okay, so we fooled you. We it, did. We did. We did. The real one is the knocker up man. Because it still exists. And I, I do have a picture of the of the knocker up man in action. Sean, we want to grab a want to grab a, a close up of a that. Close up of that. And again, this is these this 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 is really neat. This research was done by Bob Zakowski, former staff person at the Web, who sent this along, saw this online, and said, "I got to send this over to Jeff and the team. They, they they'd probably make." Make some fun with that. So the knocker up man, he'd go around ringing uh, or not waking ringing, people up. Knocking. I think the way I think I think the the reason I fooled you is because I added in some terms like shards and chartouillers. Yes. Yeah. So, so, it sounded good, right? So so, so you, um, it's not an urban dictionary, right? Those words, right? So uh, I mean, <sighs> that's it's I, it's got to be legit. It's, it's on the internet. It's kind of lost. It's on the internet. It's got to be legit. But, but but anyways, the knocker up man. Um, I I love the not job. Not to be confused he, with he knocking ha- boots. He, he, he has a hammer. <laughs> he he he, 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 has, a, he has a hammer, not that's a stick, but a hammer. And uh, he has a quite the uniform on. He does. He does. He's like a, he's like a news. He's like an old. He's like an older newsboy. Yeah, look at that. Extra, extra. He's got his hand in his pocket. He's a casual knocker. He's casual. a very he's, casual he's like, knocker. He actually looks pretty suave. Like he knows what he's doing. You know, I'm I'm here to knock on your door. Hey, I'm not. Yeah. I've been knocking on doors an hour. Look at me. Hello, governor. Wake up there, sir. You know what? Actually, that fits right there. You do look like that. Wake up, governor. That accent works. Wake up, governor. Right. Absolutely. It does. That's Wake Jeff. That's Jeff in the previous Well, slide. Howard Lucas, one of the leaders of uh, Green Vitalize uh, uh, Urban Growers, thank you for coming in. I'm glad we cleared up the whole mystery with the marijuana. I'm glad, I'm glad you're not involved, you know, just in case. Uh, but it sounds like you might go that way in the future. You never know. It's a business opportunity. Business opportunity. And Very legal. Speaking of which, right right there, right? Look in the corner. Sean, can we get a picture of that? What, what do you got there? Uh, we're just going. We're panning the is whole that aqua, room Is that we're aquaponics? What do we room. got going on there? It's close. Give us a professional That's opinion. Can I smoke that? Uh, Probably not, right? <laughs> probably not. <laughs> probably not safe. And probably not healthy. Though. It's actually probably plastic. Stick to the Cheetos it's actually those. probably yeah, plastic. Yeah, yeah. So, well, sir, thank well, you for being on the show. Well, we're gonna we're gonna much. go to a break now while we Play transition back uh, into more of the working lunch. When you're alone and life is making you lonely, you can always go downtown. When- nope. When you- Mr. Pop. I don't know why you don't take me downtown. Like you got anywhere better to be. Will I see you tonight? On a downtown train. Nope. And now it's time for another edition of Downtown with Ethan Brown. 
Hey everyone, welcome back to another segment of Downtown with Ethan Brown. I am your host, Ethan Brown, and I'm actually here with Sean Woods, who's one of the owner and operators of the Dead Horse Hill restaurant. How's things going, Sean? Uh, going very well, very well. <laughs> um, you guys actually work with the city of Worcester in order to get this establishment here. I think it was a microloan, is that correct? Uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. can you tell me a little bit about your experience with them? Uh, yeah, so I mean, the, the downtown area uh, is, is sort of asking for uh, retail and restaurants. Yes. Yeah. And I felt that the skill set that Jared and I had would be perfect for helping bring back this uh, once glorious area. Mm -hmm. um, so through a, a micro loan available by the economic uh, redevelopment, yep. uh, we were able to take care of a lot of the things uh, that we normally wouldn't have been able to take care of. It, mm -hmm. it definitely helped us get our doors open. Would overall, would you say experience was good? Uh, yeah, actually, the experience was was much better than good. It was it was a great experience because it put me in touch with a lot of people mm -hmm. that work in the city, and it just kind of inadvertently kind of networked us mm -hmm. with a bunch of other groups, and so we've made a lot of like friends through this experience of, of that's the awesome. Micro loan. Now, tell me a little bit. Is this your first restaurant that you run? Which what's your background in? Yeah, I've worked in uh, I've worked in restaurants. Before I started working in, uh, in restaurants as mm -hmm. a teenager, uh, you know, un until I could launch like a music career, uh, and I, I chased that for <laughs> for years, um, and then as that started winding down, I decided to take the mm -hmm. the food and hospitality industry more seriously, and so I was very selective about yep. where I worked and who I was working under and the things I could learn from that. Mm -hmm. um, again, through that, uh, it's a very intense. Uh, network i was able to meet jared foreman who shares a lot of the same views yeah, and opinions cool. about food and hospitality as i do so we know that uh even though we like to joke around we take things very seriously mm -hmm. and uh when this opportunity came up it was it was perfect cool sean mentioned his his fledgling uh music career i had one as well for a short period of time okay i did uh, uh hand bone solos with spoons so kind of like yeah um I lost one of the spoons, and as a result, things oh. really didn't work out. So, so actually, uh, in addition to the micro loan, mm -hmm. they gave us a spoon, <laughs> Did and they? that was that that really helped us open a lot quicker. Awesome! So it I might mean, have man, been that that missing spoon it could be that, back it there could somewhere. be mine. That's so we, why.